I got two minutes here, so let me show you something really, really quick. Let's see if I can do this. Actually, let's just start with a f clean slate. I mentioned that this is a class designer and not a form designer. The reason is, is because you can actually develop useful classes. So let me take this. I have a object here. I'm going to add a custom class. All right, I already have it prepared. If you've ever had to deal with uh, lists of items, you have what's known as a mover. You have a, a to list and a from list, and you want to let the user do a selection. I'm going to just uh, let me make sure I'm on the right thing. There we go. Give it a little more room. All right, and then what you have here is I can do something in the forms after init all. After init fires after the form itself is, in, is created. After init all fires after all its sub-objects are created. So I can just do this and say self.pnl mover, which is the name of it, dot set list. And let's give it a list. I'm going to have a prop for prop in. Okay, I'm going to create a little list here. It's just all the properties of that, fo of that form that start with capital P. And I'm just going to set the list to that. Now, if I were to run this right now, it's going to ask me to save it. So let's just call this demo. And what did I do? Invalid syntax. Oh, I forgot the closing parents for the set list. Thank you. And what did it do now? Set list, proper, oh, duh, that goes in there. Ah, there we go. Now, it's hard to tell that that's an actual form because nothing's in there. So what is that? Set, oh, it's set lists. Don't you love iterative development? <laughs> all right, there we go. Okay, so we got all the properties in there and you can click that one and add it over there. You can select a bunch of them and add that. You can add them all, remove them all. Okay, that's a basic mover form. And I didn't do anything in there except drop this pre made class in there. Call a method to set the list. There's a get selection method that you can also use to get the results that the user selected. I could show you a lot more, but we're out of time. So uh, if there are any questions, we've got microphones here. Anyone? Okay, use the microphone just so everyone else can hear you. One of my favorite controls in WX Python is the tree grid. Tree so grid? Yes, yeah, so it has a tree on the left with, a, with for each element in the tree at leaf nodes, there's a grid beside it. Do you have any such thing in, in uh, demo? I know that there's the tree list control that sort of looks like a grid. Um, tree list is a, is a precursor of tree grid. Okay, no, I haven't played with that one yet, but the thing is, is that we just take those base classes and we have our standard properties that we add in and then just have to wrap whatever particular methods there are. So there's no reason why we couldn't add it, we just haven't. Okay? Uh, how does this work with um, uh, legacy programming? We have a lot of uh, WX Python built up and things like um, that. Uh, all right, uh, one of the things that you'll notice if I, if I just run this form again is a lot of, th a lot of these things are WX Python uh, methods. And so all of the WX code is still exposed. If you wanted to, you could drop a WX control in there that we haven't wrapped. You, can, you have full access to the WX, WX layer. The only problem with it is, is that eventually it wouldn't be UI agnostic. Now you're you know, locking into a specific toolkit. But you have full access to the WX Python uh, power and all that stuff. Yeah? Um, could you discuss uh, creating events from, I've got, I've got an application where I've got uh, a source of events outside of my application. Can you discuss sort of catching those and creating your own events to, to oh. use the on method? Yeah, um, well, the events that we have, we have our own event classes and things like that, you would create an event that inherits from that and then if you just said raise event, it would be raised and anything that 
could bind, could then bind to that event and respond to it. You know, we use that a lot. We have a similar thing for exceptions. So if you want to raise an exception, you can catch that exception and deal with it appropriately. Yeah. Have you considered uh, using any exceptions to SQL, like SQL Alchemy, for example? Yeah, a couple of people have asked that. Um, like I said, three years ago when we started this, there was SQL object. I don't even know if Alchemy was out yet, but it sort of did what we wanted, but not quite. And so we decided to write something of our own. It's not really an ORM. It doesn't work like an ORM. So that's why we never went with that. I know SQL Alchemy, though, has a lot of other cool stuff that um, we have definitely considered taking a look at. So, did you? Fortunately, that was my question also. Do you want me to repeat the answer then? <laughs> okay. Uh, is there any, uh, have you integrated it at all with uh, some of the like, easy install with the uh, other Integrated with what? I didn't hear you. Uh, have you done any integration or thought about integrating with uh, easy install? Easy install? Eggs. Oh, eggs. Um, that's one of the things we're here to work on. Uh, yeah, we do have an egg set up. Uh, for the for Windows, does it work, Paul? Does it work with other things too? Oh, it works on. All, okay, just wanted to make sure. It just seems to be the Windows people who use it the most. But yeah, uh, do we have time for one more? Uh, we're actually up time. Sorry. All right. By the way, that's Paul right there. I'm Ed. Come grab me or him anytime if you have any other questions or anything. Thanks. Just a quick reminder: we have. About